Greetings and salutations. Game changers. It is, it is now time to change the game. All right? So first and foremost, I want to thank Sylvia for inviting me out here. But more importantly, let me thank all of you. Because I know that you can do a lot of things with your time, energy, and efforts. But you chose to spend it with me <laughs> right now. And I appreciate that. I also understand that when people come to speeches like this and you hear somebody speak, you want to be able to take away something that you can do right now. What can I walk away with right now that can, I can actually implement and make change. Sometimes people might stand up and they'll say that, you know what, let me show you how to release this serotonin and this dopamine and we're going to jog around the rings of Saturn and sniff melanin. That's cool. That's great. If we want to sound like the deep ones around the water cooler at work. But what can I do right now? What tool can I put in my bag? Or if it's not for me, what can I pass on to somebody else that they can start to implement right now? That's what's going to take us to an affirmation. You see, an affirmation is a great way to start to open up different streams of cognition if one is dealing with some mental blockage. If one is dealing with some type of wanting to refocus or recenter or rebalance, then you say that I am, which speaks to the present, and then whatever after that is, that's what it's going to be. But there's a catch, my friend. If you don't take the proper time to build a proper affirmation, then what's going to happen is that affirmation is going to start to call things into your life that you're just not ready for. Or it's going to put more on your back than it's willing to carry. And then all of a sudden, the next day, you'll be trying to affirm things that you just affirmed for yesterday. You're trying to get rid of them to try to call yourselves into more power on the next day. We don't want that for you. So we want to take the time to build it. Now I know what you're asking. You say, Zach, I say yes. You say, Zach, I say yes. How do I build an affirmation? <laughs> no worries. I'm going to show you how. The first step is knowledge. And there's going to be some branches that come from that, which first starts with a thought. And then the next one is going to be a vision. And you're going to put a bow tie on it with faith. That's step one. Step two is going to take you to some wisdom, which is connected to a feeling. And then your last step, which is understanding, or the affirmation, which is the manifestation. But don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it. Let's go from step one, is the knowledge, which we've got to deal with the thought. Now, why is it problematic for people to think? Well, usually, people are dealing with a lot of things on their plate, whether it's going to work, sitting in traffic, they got to worry about food that's being on the table, or while you're sitting in that traffic, sometimes you look down and the light comes on on your gas needle, or maybe the check engine light comes on. And when you get home and you're dealing with all this different stuff that you have going on, and it's finally time to affirm things that you want in your life, then they just say, I don't want to think about it. I just want to relax, put some TV on, maybe eat some sugar, and just chill. Whatever happens, just let it happen. But we want to be able to consciously create. And a lot of times, it just comes from somebody saying, I don't care, which is hard for some people. Because where your attention flows, that's where the energy goes. So sometimes, you have to now say, I don't care. Somebody asked me the other day, did you see what the president tweeted the other day? No. I'm going to help you with something. I don't care. What does his tweet have to do with me? I think there's a term in the fire department where they call it rubbernecking. And my brother is a firefighter, and he tells me this all the time. He says, you know what, there's accidents on the side of the road, and they're over there working. But then what he sees is, as people are driving by, they get the rubberneck. 
and they look, instead of going in the direction where they're supposed to be going. So now, because I'm looking at an accident on the side of the road, giving it my attention, now I slow down traffic. Now everything is slowed down behind me while I'm giving something attention where I'm not even supposed to be looking. So now everything is slowed down. Well, what happens in your own life when you start to give attention to things that absolutely have nothing to do with you? You start to cause a traffic jam. And then that traffic jam starts to now weigh heavy on your mind. So when you get home, you just seem like you're so tired. And then they say, what'd you do all day? Nothing. You wasn't running? You didn't go to the gym? No. But the mind been working. But how the mind works is it wants to solve a problem. So any problem you put in front of it, it's going to fix it, whether it can solve the problem or not. And then where your attention goes, energy flows. Now on the opposite end of that, some people have unlimited amounts of potential. And they have all these ideas in their mind. And I just need to get it out. And they have all these thoughts. So when I sit down and I start to write, these thoughts start running in my mind. And all of them start coming up. Now thoughts are things. And these things want to be heard. So when you sit down to write, they say, uh-oh, we're getting out of here. And I'm first. But you got to slow that down because when so many things start coming at you, now you can get overwhelmed. It's no different than when my niece and my nephew came out here. And I took them to Lake Balboa and I gave them some bread. And we were out there at the lake and we were feeding the ducks. And I don't know if you guys ever fed geese. <laughs> geese are aggressive. <laughs> okay. So they're throwing it in the ducks and it's all, it's a beautiful day. And they're coming up and eating. And then the geese start coming and throwing the other ducks in the water. Uh, get out of here. Uh, back up. And they're getting closer and closer to my niece and nephew. And they're getting closer, and I'm starting to laugh because my, my nephew is one and a half, so he's just throwing it. And then all of a sudden, they come up and snatch it out of his hand. Now, I thought it was funny, but my sister didn't think so. So then I had to jump in and say, hey, 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 hey. Back up. My mans. But y'all got to get in order. See, you're going to eat. But it can't be total anarchy out here. Well, sometimes you got to tell that to yourself in your mind. Everything starts running around. And you sit down, and when you want to start to write, and then all of a sudden, them geese start to say, I'm getting this bread. <sighs> I'm getting out of here. <sighs> Get out of here. And then you got to tell yourself, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> you get out of here. But you got to get in line. And then once you can get your thoughts in line, then you start to say what it is that you want. So if I stand in front of you and I tell you, I am the greatest basketball player to walk the face of the earth, that's going to take me to my next step, which is a vision. What does that look like? I have to now see myself as the greatest basketball player to walk the face of the earth. I have to wake up in the dawning like the greatest. I got to carry myself greatest. I have to envision in my mind now seeing myself make baskets. I got to envision in my mind seeing myself play defense. I have to envision in my mind pressure situations. I have to see myself with five seconds on the clock. We're down by one. My coach calls a timeout and I start walking to the huddle. You see, I got to see that. I got to get in the huddle and I see my coach grab that dry erase board as he gets the black marker and he starts drawing Z's and X's and he says, Zach, we're going to get you the ball. Go win the game. I got to see that. I got to stand up and break the huddle as my teammates put one hand in, went on me, went on three. As I walk to the floor and I see the lights flickering off the hardwood, you see, I got to see that. I take another glance up as I see the defense start to take the floor, and I need to see if they're in a 2-3 or a man-to-man -man so I know how to attack this defense, you see. I got to see that. I look over and I see my teammate standing next to the ref as he has the ball in his left hand. He puts his right hand in the air as he hands it to my teammate because the ball is about to be put in play. Then he starts counting. One. Two. 
I take a hard V cut off my defender so I can get open to get the ball. As I grab the ball, I now take a look and see where the defenders are and see where they have shifted. Take my hard dribble up to the right side of the floor, but then I see a double team coming, so I take a hard right crossover back to the other side. I got to see that. I take another hard dribble, and I see my defender coming to set the screen just like the play was drawn up. I got to see that. I go right off of his right shoulder as I give the other defender a move because you already know he can't hold me. I got to see that. I get to my sweet spot as my right heel hits the ground. I square up as my left foot starts to point towards the basket, elbow in, wrist cocked. I see the spalding going between my fingers as I start to raise up to take the shot. I see everybody below me looking like ants. I focus on the rim. Wrist starts to flick. Ball starts to rotate, going towards the basket as the basket gets bigger. Ball starts to rotate as the basket gets bigger. Ball starts to rotate as the basket gets bigger. Whew. Nothing but net. I got to see my coach now start to throw his hands in the air, kicking his right leg out like a little schoolgirl who just was told, you probably go to Disneyland. <laughs> I got to see that. I got to see my teammates in the crowd jumping up and going crazy. I got to see that. Once you see the vision, you're going to seal that with a bow tie now, with faith. See, faith is a knowing in the unseen. I'm not talking about a hope. I'm not talking about a belief. Both of those are products of anxiety. You see, when a bird lands on a branch, its faith and ability is not in the branch, but in what? Its own ability to fly. You got to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that whatever it is that you see, you got to know you can get it done. And you don't have to explain your vision to him. It's not his vision. You don't got to explain your vision to her. It's not her vision. You just got to know beyond the shadow of a doubt, I can get this done. Which will then take you to your next step, which is the wisdom which is connected to a feeling. Somebody say feeling. 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 I got three people listening. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> we got to turn up the intensity in here. Huh? Ah. <laughs> All right, so now you want to tap into your imagination. And when you tap into that imagination, depending on what system you study, it's going to be your solar chakra. Or if you're coming from the Ifa tradition, it's going to be your Ori Inu, or what some people say, your gut, coming from the German, which they say Gut, or what other people would know as God. You're going to have to tap into that. And you're going to have to get a 360 degree view of what it's going to feel like. What's it going to feel like when that shot goes in? What's it going to feel like when the stands is going crazy and they're jumping up and down and they start to rush the court and you can feel the electric in the air? What's it going to feel like? What's it going to feel like when your teammates have their hands stretched out to the air and they come over there and they grab you and squeeze you tighter than the lid on a pickle jar? <laughs> What's it going to feel like? What's it going to feel like when the reporter comes over to you and puts the microphone in your face and they ask you many questions like, how does it feel to be a champion? Or more importantly, how does it feel to be a hero? What's it going to feel like? Damn good. Come on now. What's it going to feel like when you're out in the streets and people all of a sudden want to stop you and say, can we get a selfie? <laughs> I have never seen somebody play like you. You are my inspiration. What's it going to feel like? Now, here's the thing. Like I said, we got to get a 360 degree view. We can't get stuck on 180 of seeing what it's going to feel like when we just going to feel good, quote unquote. Because if we're going to talk about the good, we got to talk about the bad. What's it going to feel like when you got to get up at 5 a.m. and go to practice? 
what's it going to feel like? What's it going to feel like at 5 a.m. in the dawning and you're running wind sprints and you're running back and forth and you feel your lungs start to constrict because you don't know you're going to make it? What's it going to feel like? What's it going to feel like as you put your head up in the air and all you hear is your coach saying, you better put that hand down. And then you open your eyes because you just tried to take your mind somewhere else. And then that bead of sweat rolls down there and you feel that salt start to burn. What's it going to feel like? What's it going to feel like as you go to start to run and then you feel your hamstrings and your lower back start to tighten up, but all you hear is, you better make it or you're coming back. What's it going to feel like? What's it going to feel like when your friends say, let's go out tonight, but you know you got to get up at 5 a.m. so you can't hang out no more and you know you got to study this film and they walk out, what's it going to feel like? What's it going to feel like when your significant other stands up and says, success is not coming fast enough? I talk to my friends more than I talk to you. I didn't sign up for this. And they walk out on you. What's it going to feel like? What's it going to feel like when the only person that you have to depend on is you? What's it going to feel like? You see, that's when we start to separate the people from who want it from those who don't want it. See, people want a champion lifestyle. They want a champion income. But they don't want to give a champion effort. But let me tell you this. If you have the gumption, if you have the will, if you have the drive, you have the heart to keep going, that's going to take you to your next step, which is the affirmation or the manifestation. If you listen to the word, the word itself is telling you what to do. Affirmation, a firm, break the word up, affirm. You are firming or strengthening what? What you already built. This is not some, oh, because I want a Bentley, now I can walk to the dealership and I can put my arms around it and I can hug it and I say, it's mine. I want it. No. It does not work like that. Don't be beguiled by people who will stand in front of you and they'll say, if you name it, you can claim it. If you name it, you can claim it. Now go claim it. No, nah, it does not work like that. Or here's my personal favorite. If I slow my voice down like this, and I tell you that everything you want in the universe is yours, all you have to do is say yes. <laughs> no. It does not work like that. You see, it sounds it makes you feel good. But how many people actually want to be good? How many want to do good? You see, we all should be doing things that are life affirming. And if your motions and your actions don't match your affirmation, then you probably guessed it. Your affirmation is not going to work. If I stand in front of you and I say I will not take another drink, but then all of a sudden you see me hanging out with alcoholics. Or I sit at the bar and I say, it's just a better view on the TV. That's the only reason why I'm up here, which is somebody told me that, by the way. <laughs> or I walk in Vaughn's and I walk down the alcoholic section and I just say, I just want to see what Jose Cuevo has done with their marketing strategy. <laughs> it's not matching up. But if you take the proper time to build that proper affirmation where you go from the knowledge, which will take you to the wisdom, which will then take you to a manifestation. If you take the proper time to do it, when you spring out of bed in the dawning and you firmly plant both of those feet on the ground and you walk over to that mirror and you stare deep into the eyes of that beautiful soul that's staring right back at you and you tell them, I am the great I am 
and I am whatever I will myself to be, then you tell life to bring it. 